On this week's boiler tip, we're going to talk about float and thermostatic versus purely thermostatic traps and how that affects their efficiency. And there's always context with efficiency, and by context I mean what's around that particular trap. Um, the question was essentially, if a float trap has more flash steam downstream in the piping, doesn't that heat end up still in the system? Um, where a uh, subcooling style trap or thermostatic trap, aren't we still losing heat radiating off the pipe before it's discharged? And the answer, once again, just depends on the situation. In this instance, we've got a kettle and we've got a float trap on it and we've also got a thermostatic trap so we can operate with either of those. Um, the float trap, all else being equal, is going to give you better performance on the kettle because it's evacuating the condensate the moment that it forms, but because it's being released at a higher temperature, we're gonna have more flash steam. Now, the real question is, where does that piping go? If that piping goes immediately to a vented receiver, then that flash steam is lost and that float trap is going to be less efficient energy-wise um, where the subcooling style trap is going to retain more heat and get more put into the process. So if I've got a trap that discharges to a deaerator tank, well, in that case, all the flash steam will be recovered. But what we have to consider is what other traps or devices does that piping serve? Because the more flash steam that we have in the condensate system, the more back pressure we have in the condensate system. So sometimes efficiencies affect the performance of other kettles or other things in the area that are operating at low pressure because of the increased pressure generated by the flash steam. So really there are a variety of factors um, that affect that, but in general, subcooling condensate is gonna guarantee that no flash steam or less flash steam is exiting the system if it's possible.